Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thanks for listening, everyone. While the rumors around the Pac-12, conference realignment, expansion, Big 12 expansion continue to swirl, SMU got its 2023 football schedule on Tuesday from the AAC. The Mustangs getting a 2023 schedule that includes major out-of-conference foes like Oklahoma and TCU, uh, along with some familiar faces in some of its new AAC brethren, at least for now. And we will break it down week by week here. Just some initial thoughts and kind of some of the things about the teams to know entering the 2023 season. So we're going to jump right in. Appreciate all you guys who have subscribed to the On the Pony Express podcast before we begin. Please keep hitting that subscribe button. But let's kick off the 2023 season preview with SMU season opener at home. The second part of this home and home series against Louisiana Tech. They'll kick off on September 2nd inside Gerald J. Ford Stadium. And look, the Bulldogs come in having uh, and will have a uh, week zero game under their belt, having played FIU. On August 26th, it's the second season of the Sonny Cumby era in Ruston. They went 3-9 and nine in 2022, but they do bring in former Boise State quarterback transfer Hank Bachmeyer to take over the helm for this Sonny Cumby offense. Um, look, he's somebody that had a career year in 2021. Uh, in 2022, he played the first four games until an OC change was made and he entered the portal it's kind of an interesting route for him to get to Louisiana Tech, but nevertheless, he's expected to be the starter for Sonny Cumbie and probably an upgrade uh, in reality when you look at their quarterback situation from last season. SMU, of course, won on that fun game in 2021 on the Hail Mary uh, in Ruston. So SMU looking to take care of business against a team coming off a rough season uh, in, in Sonny Cumbie's first year as head coach of Louisiana Tech. And all these game times right now are TBD. What I can tell you is that I would expect some of the weekday, Thursday, Friday games to, of course, be at night. So keep that in mind as we go through this schedule breakdown. Then SMU does head to Oklahoma. I'm kind of hoping you get your normal uh, 11 a.m. kickoff here in Norman for this one. I'll be up there. I already have that one circled. Uh, for SMU's game against Oklahoma, who went 6-7 in 2022 in Brent Venables' first season as head coach of the Sooners. Dylan Gabriel does return at quarterback, and they did add or re-add tight end Austin Stogner through the transfer portal, as well as uh, Oklahoma State defensive end Trace Ford. They also added another elite uh, former prospect in Deshaun McCullough at uh, edge spot kind of linebacker position. And then another highly touted transfer they bring in is Emeka Megwa from Washington, somebody that SME fans are kind of familiar with as they were uh, recruiting him pretty heavily despite him being a highly touted prospect who ended up going to UW um, for, for two seasons. Um, didn't, didn't see any action, but again, heads to Norman now uh, to, to play for the Sooners. Uh, I think when you look at Oklahoma, having watched them, obviously they had some issues with quarterback once injuries piled up. Uh, to Dylan Gabriel and and another uh, one of their quarterbacks uh, who got hurt, um, they were in position to you know give TCU certainly a game as Dylan Gabriel was finding his groove before a really nasty injury to him. And Brent Venables, you know, went through that first season as OU's head coach, and boy, it was a tough go uh, for Brent Venables. They did kind of find their footing a little bit late in the season, but just one of those first years to forget. Um, for any head coach, especially at a high-profile program like like Oklahoma, again, just went six and seven. So the Mustangs will go into that one, you know, quite frankly, you know, talent-wise, certainly a, a big discrepancy. But in all honesty, after the the first season with Rat Lash, they went to a bowl game. SMU does return a good bit of talent. They added a lot, obviously, through the transfer portal. And that one will honestly come down to how quickly Preston Stone can settle in as a starting quarterback, which we expect him to be that starter. If he's playing at a high level fairly quickly, you could kind of put that one as all bets are off. You know, we talk about it a lot on this podcast, and we've seen it over the last few years. SMU is talented enough to really hang with just about anyone on their schedule. 
obviously when you see a team like Oklahoma pop up on SMU schedule one, it, it's a nice surprise. I mean, the way this game came together with SMU being able to put, um, you know, a non-conference agreement together with the Sooners as they head to the SEC and uh, needed to get that game against Georgia off their schedule. This is a fun opportunity for SMU. They can really just go in there and let it fly. I expect Oklahoma to, to obviously put together a much better 2023 campaign. Uh, they return, of course, Jeff Levy as their offensive coordinator, who's one of the better minds in college football. Um, Brent Venables is. Uh, you know, added some key pieces as far as talent goes in their recruiting class. They had a five-star Peyton Bowen at safety. Uh, they're looking to retool that team, obviously, a little bit and, uh, you know, put together something a lot better than what Sooner fans were used to in 2022, or else uh, you could talk about that hot seat uh, certainly starting to heat up for Brent Venables early on in his tenure. But uh, just kind of previewing this this schedule, I'm, I am going to kind of give, you know, a loose game prediction, you know, just without a score first week, Louisiana tech, I expect SMU to take care of business and grab a win um, against Oklahoma. It's hard for me to sit here and, and predict an SMU win. You know, I, I think that's a team that just on paper has a, a different level of what SMU is going to have on both sides of the ball in the trenches. And that's probably where um, SMU could be a little bit overmatched. And, you know, you saw SMU address the trenches on both sides of the ball, but there's just a kind of a different level of depth even with an Oklahoma team that, um, you know, did not have a good season last year. It's one of those games that we'll find out a lot about SMU, not because of whether they win or lose, quite honestly, but how well they compete with the Sooners. And, I mean, this is a team that going into 2023, SMU will be honestly very much a team that wants to and can win every game on its schedule. I just don't see it right now with Oklahoma returning Dylan Gabriel. I think him going into his second year as a starter will, will certainly help um, Oklahoma kind of right the ship going into the, the, that season. Um, so right now I'm going to pencil that one in uh, for a loss when it comes to what SMU, um, you know, I I as far as you know, expectations going into that one. But I'll, I'll say this. I, I think we'll find out a lot you know, week one about both teams uh, potentially and and maybe see uh, if SMU can pull an upset in Norman. That would certainly be uh, a very early storyline uh, of the 2023 season for SMU if they can get that win, get some momentum going um, because then they head home to uh, face Prairie View A&M who went six and five in 2022, a game that SMU should win, should take care of business um, and not going to spend too much time on that one. You then get to the rematch uh, from last season's game in Ford Stadium where TCU uh, jumped out to a big lead early on and was able to uh, get by SMU. SMU played TCU as well as just about anyone outside of Kansas State and Texas in 2022. Of course, the Corn Horn Frogs did go on to play for a national championship, getting beat up pretty good um, by Georgia. But uh, this is going to be a diff different TCU team. You know, they lose Max Duggan. They lost Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator, who – uh, headed off to Clemson, and they'll be looking to replace Quentin Johnson. Uh, there's a lot of other players, um, uh, Gavin uh, Tomlinson uh, Hodges, uh, or Hodges Tomlinson, if I have that right, uh, at, at, in the secondary, um, the Thorpe Award winner. They'll be replacing him. This is a team that is going to have a new look under Sonny Dykes in year two. Um, you know, they bring in Kendall Bryles as the offensive coordinator, and now Chandler Morris is probably going to get his full time an opportunity to start with Sam Jackson, who was kind of somebody that a lot of TCU fans were, were kind of clamoring to see get a really good shot at the starting job. Uh, Chandler Morris is going to probably take over at quarterback. He'll have some new look uh, skill position players to get the ball to. Jalen Robinson, who's formerly from UCF, then went to Ole Miss, finally ends up on Sonny Dykes' roster um, in uh, Fort Worth. And then they added... JoJo Earl, uh, a former high-end prospect from Alabama um, who returns home to the Alito area uh, to play for the Frogs. And then Tommy Brockermeyer, uh, who's a five-star prospect coming out of high school. And then Trey Sanders, a five-star running back from Alabama. And Jack Besh, a kind of big wide receiver who transfers in from LSU. Um, they also added Avery Helm from Florida, defensive back. So obviously TCU hitting the transfer portal as hard as SMU, certainly. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys work out. You know, JoJo Earl, 
It's probably the most highly touted and, and highest end younger prospect they added. Um, and he's a versatile slot. It can really make a lot of big plays and has some speed. Tommy Rockmeyer, if he's healthy, he's going to factor in on that offensive line early on. Trey Sanders, who hasn't stayed healthy at Alabama, is a big running back who comes into the fold for the Frogs. And then Jack Besh, of course, from LSU, who I'm familiar with. Again, kind of a big wide receiver who got lost in the fold in Brian Kelly's first year at LSU. He also battled some injuries. Um, not somebody who's a burner, but makes a lot of really good contested catches. So, um, you know, TCU has a lot uh, to replace uh, coming off this 2022 season. That was that was obviously a storybook for them. It's tough, tough call on this one. You know, the the one thing I'll say is that I'm just not that high on Chandler Morris, um, quite honestly. So, you know, we saw how things were going for him early in that game against Colorado before he got hurt last season. He's been around college football a little while now. I mean, this isn't, you know, a, a young, young player stepping into the starting job. Um, right now, though, I mean, it, it's tough with what TCU had put together last year to, for me to not pick TCU in this game. I think this is out of the two non-conference games, the one that SMU would be most likely to win um, just because of so many changes at TCU. At this point, they'll be, you know, four weeks into the season and they'll probably have had a chance to settle back in a little bit more. But when you look at, you know, what they were able to do last year, I mean, have they, did they lose enough that they're not going to be a bold team in the big 12, that they're not going to be right in the mix to win a big 12 championship again. That's kind of the hard question when you get down to it. Um, this is where Brett Lashley, I, I think this is where you've got to make a statement and, and it's a hard ask coming off uh, a national championship for TCU for you to go into Fort Worth and, and beat the Frogs. But it's it's a game that with what SMU's added through the transfer portal and address some deficiencies. Remember, look, SMU last year just was way too hyped up for that game. Did not get off the bus in time for the start of kickoff. TCU jumped all over SMU and then was able to cruise. But uh, SMU did make it a game. They very much ended up in the game um, and, and obviously that, that um, oh gosh, the jumping, the long snapper call obviously ruined SMU's chances uh, to get a, get a shot to tie the game. So um, that's that's a game where when you're now in year two with Rhett Lashley, you've had some minor coaching changes um, made. Um, you bring in Maurice Crum to coach the linebacker. Scott Simons wants to fix up that safety unit um, as a defensive coordinator and, and Kyle Cooper moves back there. Uh, to help him there and also coach special teams, you, you've added so much talent and you added that talent for a game like this. And there's no doubt in my mind right now that you're going to see SMU come out with a better effort early in the game. And this is the type of game that Rhett Lashley was hired to really make the waves with, especially in terms of play calling and offensive game plan and all those things. So I am not going to count SMU out of this one. And, there, and there's part of me that as I learn more about what TCU uh, is going to look like next season and what SMU looks like in the spring, that maybe when we are sitting here in August doing our final predictions, that maybe SMU uh, is, is going to get my prediction. And, and look, I cover SMU. I, I know a lot more about SMU than I'm going to about TCU. Um, but I do think SMU is certainly trending up after what they added in the transfer portal and building off that seven and five first season, uh, regular season under Rhett Lashley. So um, right now, penciling SMU in for a loss, but you've got to look at that one as, as a very winnable game. And when you look at expectations, expectations are SMU needs to win that game. And I, I think that's important to to realize and and also note that SMU is, has a good enough roster to, to win that game as well. September 30th, SMU opens the AAC schedule with Charlotte. Three and nine, not three and nine season last year. Um, uh, Biff Poggi, uh, the head coach at Charlotte, former Michigan associate head coach. He had founded St. Francis Academy, a former or well, a powerhouse now in the high school ranks um, in the Baltimore area. This is a very peculiar um, situation when you look at. Uh, what Charlotte is going to do in its first season um, in the AAC. I mean, you've got to be sitting here 
uh, looking at what they're going to do as uh, probably low expectations. I mean, coming off a three and nine season, uh, that's going to be one where people are going to look at them as you know probably an early bottom feeder. I'm going to predict SMU takes care of business. I don't know too much about them uh, as of now, but uh, I will say uh, SMU better be ready to go coming off that TCU game and not have any sort of hangover. Um, and I do think SMU will get the job done and, and beat Charlotte, moving to three and two on the year. They then go into a bye week on October 7th weekend before heading up to East Carolina for a Thursday game on October 12th. Uh, SMU, seven and five last year in the regular season, uh, finished seven and six overall. Well, East Carolina finished eight and five in 2022 under Mike Houston, who's now been there a while. They've made back-to-back -back bowl trips, um, and they beat Coastal Carolina to cap the year in their bowl game. Holton Aylers is finally gone at quarterback for the Pirates. Mason Garcia is expected to take over. He's played very much in a reserve role so far in his career. Um, didn't play much at all. Played in one game that I saw on his um, bio online last season, but he played a little bit more in 2021. Um, they've been able to put up points offensively. So um, that's one where, you know, I think SMU, if you want to be about it, you, you got to go to East Carolina and get a win. Greenville is a tough place to play. Um, last time SMU went there, uh, they lost in 2020 uh, in kind of a barn burner um, game in that one. So, um, you know, that's a game that, SMU has to have, you know, you come off, you would think a win over Charlotte and a bye week, and you've got to take care of business against a team like East Carolina. If you want to win the conference, those are the expectations for SMU. And I'm sticking with them in that sense, uh, moving SMU to four and two, getting a win over East Carolina. I just think SMU's talent level, and if they're healthy at that point, it's going to put them in a strong position to be uh, four and two. Uh, two games into league play and six games in overall. They'll then face another Friday night game on the road at Temple. Uh, they'll obviously have some time to recover after that trip out to East Carolina on that Thursday night the week prior. And then they head to Temple, who's 3-9 and nine in 2022. Stan Drayton's a head coach entering his second season. Kurt Warner's son, E.J. Warner, was the AAC Rookie of the Year last year, SMU secondary um, we'll have to be ready for uh, E.J. Warner at quarterback, who had huge passing games against Houston and East Carolina. Uh, Temple did give East Carolina all they could handle, um, losing in, in their final game of the regular season, I'm pretty sure, uh, if I have that right off the top of my head when I was perusing the uh, schedule on that one. But, you know, that's one that, again, you know, the talent levels overall on the teams are very different. I would think SMU goes in and handles business against Temple moving to five and two. Then SMU hosts Tulsa for homecoming on October 28th, Saturday, of course. Uh, the Golden Hurricane moved on from Philip Montgomery after a long tenure there and kind of had a difficult time hiring somebody to replace him after a five and seven season in 2022. They ended up hiring Kevin Wilson from Ohio State, who was their longtime offense coordinator and tight ends coach after he had spent some time at Indiana as a head coach. He's been a high-profile um, assistant coach throughout his career for the most part. He's also been at Oklahoma. Braylon Braxton returns as a starting quarterback. Davis Brin moved on to Georgia Southern. Uh, Braylon Braxton kind of gave them a spark when he came in last season against SMU as uh, SMU brought in uh, Preston Stone and Kevin Henry Jennings as the two quarterbacks they ended up using. Preston Stone, of course, started things off hot with a bomb to Rasheed Rice to get things going. The Mustangs looked like they were going to run away with it. And then Preston Stone got hurt. Kevin Henry Jennings came in and managed that offense towards the end of the first half well. They got a field goal out of it. And then SMU was able to take care of business in the second half um, and hold off Braylon Braxton uh, coming in and making some waves with what he could do both through the air and on the ground. Uh, that was what gave them some issues was when he got out and started running around. But, you know, this is one where, again, a school in transition with a first-year head coach and probably a, a, a shocking move. And Kevin Kevin Wilson runs a little bit of a different scheme than Philip Montgomery did, um, where he ran that, that Baylor offense um, that we're all so familiar with now. Kevin Wilson, a little bit more of that true spread attack. 
that comes from Ohio State, a little bit of tight end involvement there. Um, I think that's going to be a program in, a tra- in transition, without a doubt. And and I would think SMU uses its homecoming win uh, to get to bowl eligibility for yet another season. So that puts SMU at six and two, entering the month of November. Last year, SMU went three and one in November to close out the regular season. Obviously, that rough loss to Tulane uh, looms in there. The Mustangs don't play the green wave this season in the regular season. Uh, they do lead off play in November at Rice on November 4th. Um, Rice went 5-8 and eight overall in 2022. Um, they did lose their bowl game. Uh, Mike Bloom uh, Bloomgren does have things kind of trending up there. Uh, they've improved, I think, the last three years as far as their win total goes. Um, he's entering his sixth season. They did play Houston very tough. Uh, they kind of got blown out by UTSA. They played a couple other games tough. Um, I think they played North Texas tough. Um, TJ McMahon returns a quarterback. He had 2,100 passing yards and 18 touchdowns in 2022. Um, so Rice, uh, who, by the way, kind of a not-so-fun fact for SMU fans, did beat SMU the last time they played each other in 2012. Uh, in 2012, I should say, down in Houston, um, back when June Jones was a head coach. So now it's Mike Bloomgren uh, versus Rhett Lashley. I'm going to predict SMU gets a win there. Again, I think talent level disparity is probably one you want to circle with that one. And SMU needs to be able to take care of business on the road. They've got some interesting road matchups. Um, obviously, a short trip down to Houston in, in, in some sense, but you, know, you got East Carolina, you got Temple, uh, but they've got to, to circle the wagons and certainly take care of business um they they finish with two and two as far as um home and road matchups in november the next home matchup friday night november 10th against north texas who went seven and seven overall last year they made a change from seth luttrell uh firing him they go to eric morris uh, who comes over after one season from washington state um after taking incarnate ward to the Southland Conference Championship game and the second round of the FCS playoffs um, prior to him jumping ship from that job to go to uh, Pullman for one season. This is going to be an interesting one. Austin Une, uh, uh, Austin Une, or I, I still haven't figured out exactly how to say it. I'll have to ask our friend uh, Matthew Bruni, um, who I work with on the LSU site, but um, Austin Une comes back. He's going to be 30. I'm pretty sure when he takes a snap next season, he's your presumed starting quarterback. He had entered the transfer portal and then withdrew his name. So now he's back uh, a chance for him to, uh, you know, get a win over SMU who has um, beaten UNT. I now, now believe four straight times, obviously the Mustangs with a heavy edge in that series overall, I'm going to predict SMU to win that one as well. Uh, which would move them to eight and two, entering two um, uh, their two final games in the regular season. Um, you look at Memphis, and it'll be Memphis Senior Day. Seth Hennigan returns at quarterback. The Tigers went seven and six overall last year, including a, a kind of a wild finish to the SMU game uh, in the regular season finale. But I'll tell you this, pressure is mounting on Ryan Silverfield. I mean, that loss to SMU really had Memphis fans ready to make a change. Um, they did lose Asa Martin, their running back, uh, and they add Blake Watson, a really good running back um, from Old Dominion, as well as Katravion Hargrave from uh, Mississippi State, a former four-star prospect. Uh, but this one comes down to this for me. You look at where SMU struggled against Memphis through the years. They've struggled in the secondary. And Seth Hennigan has had his way with SMU pretty much every time he's uh, played them. But uh, this is, again, one of those situations you have two programs on on kind of different footings right now. Um, and obviously playing at the Liberty Bowl hasn't been necessarily kind to SMU. But this is one where you're, you're starting to smell blood in the water if you're SMU. And, you know, quite frankly, this is the win that, you know, you don't want to overlook Navy by any means but you could all but punch your ticket to the AAC championship game with a win at Memphis. I think if you're pressed in stone at this point and the weapons you have, you're going to be able to put up points and the remade secondary for SMU will be able to help get it done and stop Seth Hennigan just enough. Um, I'm penciling this one in for a win as well for SMU. 
moving them to nine and two on the season. They should be well into the top 25 in my mind, at least um, after this win. Then you get to Navy. They finished four and eight overall in 2022. Ken Niamatololo is gone uh, after all those years in Annapolis. Uh, D.C. Brian Newberry was promoted. Um, one quick note on the midshipmen. They'll return, return two capable quarterbacks in Ty Lavatea, uh, and Ty Lavate and Xavier Arline, both who took multiple starts last year for the midshipmen. You can never count Navy out, but on the bright side, SMU does finish with Navy at home, which is important for the Mustangs. Of course, Annapolis has been a house of horrors of sorts for the Mustangs overall, um, you know, throughout the years. So uh, they'll finish up the regular season with Memphis or with Navy. Um, and I predict SMU to take care of business and get a win over the midshipmen, pushing them to 10 and two and punching their ticket to the AAC championship game on December 2nd. Will SMU host that? That'll depend on what teams like UTSA, Tulane um, do next season. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly be getting into more in-depth previews of the new AAC uh, members for SMU fans, as well as uh, the returning members to see where they stand. We'll do a lot more of that once spring football concludes. But you look at the schedule for SMU, I think it's a, for the teams they have to play in this new league, it's a, it's a fun schedule. You got three games that'll be nationally televised during the week on a Thursday or Friday, um, some away, some home. And then you have two really marquee out of conference games. And you have some games that, of, of course, every year seem to, you know, give you some some sort of entry, whether it be to uh, whether it be Tulsa, whether it be Memphis uh, in that mix. So it is what it is. We'll see if this is maybe the last season in the AAC for SMU. If not, uh, we'll be back here again to preview another round of AAC football for SMU heading into 2024. But right now. This kind of took a little bit of the attention off of what is a busy time as far as tracking Pac-12, Big 12, conference realignment and expansion rumors around SMU. The Mustangs looking like a favorite to join the Pac-12 at this point, along with San Diego State. So we'll continue to track that for you guys at OnThePonyExpress.com. Please subscribe to OnThePonyExpress.com. Just $10 a month gets you all the access into SMU Spring Football we're limited to 20 minutes of practice that we're allowed to go into. So you'll need all the scoop behind the scenes to know how the Mustangs are looking in spring practice. So subscribe. We'll have tidbits, practice notes, all of those things, as well as practice highlights on our YouTube page. So hit that subscribe button to the YouTube page as well. Help us grow to a thousand subscribers uh, so we can start making a little bit of money off the, the our YouTube channel. Appreciate all you guys who have helped us grow. Hope you guys enjoyed this preview of the 2023 SMU football schedule. I've got the Mustangs going 10-2 and two at this point and winning their division in the AAC before heading to face somebody in the AAC championship game. So appreciate you guys listening. We'll be back later this week with another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast previewing another position group for the Mustangs heading into spring practice, which starts March 2nd, first media availability. March 4th. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.